Warner Brothers Discover and rival Paramount Global are in early uh, merger talks. Very early, it sounds like. Sources familiar with the matter told CNBC. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav uh, and Paramount CEO Bob ba Backish met on Tuesday to discuss the contours of a possible deal right over here. Across the street, yeah. Sources said discussions are preliminary uh, and a deal may not materialize. Uh, join us now, Puck's uh, Matt Bellany. And uh, what, they know something we don't know about, uh, <laughs> about this passing muster? I mean, how would this possibly... It couldn't get through right now, it doesn't seem like, with, with the, the, the current environment, could it? Well, you never know. And honestly, the way that these media companies are looking right now, perhaps they would argue that they need this scale to go up against big tech. And I think John Malone, the investor, has said maybe it would be even more uh, likely to go through if one of these companies was in bankruptcy, mm -hmm. which if Paramount Global continues on the track that it's on, we could be talking about. I don't know that it'll be bankrupt, but it's certainly getting close to a spiral where the shareholders are going to come up against Sherry Redstone. She knows she has to do something. This is something. And Bob Backish is now having a meeting to say, OK, make us an offer. See what you got. Netflix is great. We know that. Zaslav's profitable, right, for the, the streaming. Been cutting debt like crazy. But it, it is a couple of pretty heavily uh, debt-laden companies. You know, you think of two companies, they're not drowning, but, it, you know, the analogy of hanging on to each other when neither one of them can swim <laughs> is it, it, kind of fitting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is more than $40 billion in debt on Warner Brothers Discovery, more than $12 billion in debt on Paramount Global. Uh, you put them together, that's a lot of debt. And they are the most exposed media companies to this downturn in television advertising. And that may not come back. I mean, they are projecting that it will come back, but Amazon's about ready to suck up a bunch of advertising. We know about the big tech monoliths that, that are gobbling up all the advertising. So this may be the best that it's, you know, today is one of those where today may be the best the company's ever going to look. Tomorrow may be worse and worse and worse. They even talk about Comcast, Warner Brothers, as if this doesn't happen. That, that, <laughs> that seems difficult, too. That, that would just show you that net, how, how powerful, te you're right, the tech is, that you could put those two companies together just to make it more likely that, that uh, they're viable competitors to, uh, to everybody else, to Netflix and, and others in tech, Amazon. Yeah, I mean, there's some speculation that this leak to the media yesterday might even be a lure to try to get Brian Roberts at Comcast to come out of the woodwork and try to make a play for one or both of the companies here. And, you know, we'll see. They haven't said one way or the other. They've got a lot of things on their plate as well. But it could make sense. What what would uh, would Comcast want? I, I think back to some of the ways the, the baby's been split in the past. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you think back to the, the Fox Disney deal, new, or News Corp Disney deal, what would be attractive to each one of the parties? What would make sense, as best as you can tell? Uh, the studio. The studio here, at Paramount in particular, <clears throat> is the asset that people want. The streaming service would probably be shut down or merged into whichever one of these companies bought Paramount Global. The cable networks are still throwing off billions of dollars of cash, but are declining assets will ultimately decline and decline and decline. So you got to figure out something to do with those. I guess the thinking is if you combine Warner's television assets with Paramount's television assets, at least you would have greater scale in a declining business. But it doesn't change the fact that that business is declining. And if you're Dazloff, you want to really take on all these dying cable networks and make it even a, a bigger problem, that's the question. Maybe they can find someone to offload to. And obviously, if Comcast bought the owner of CBS, there would be a problem owning two broadcast channels. You would probably have to divest one of those or get the government to change the rule. So why isn't streaming, why, 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 what you just described for legacy media and cable, why isn't streaming a huge beneficiary that we thought it would be? I mean, I don't see who's benefit. It's not a zero-sum game. It's like nobody's winning. Well, Netflix is winning. Netflix but is profitable. Netflix. And right. Netflix has a real business. And Netflix, most importantly, is not dragged down by the transition away from these linear businesses. And they've been able to just invest, invest, invest. They have one business. And that's a good thing. It's also a bad thing sometimes. But in the streaming wars, it is a good thing. And Netflix is now pulling away 
250 million subscribers worldwide. The problem is, is that everybody thought there would be all these subscribers out there for the taking. Turns out it's much harder. It's crazy that it's almost worth it for Zaslav just for the NFL. <laughs> almost worth it just for that. It's just crazy. Maybe. I mean, if, if you think about Warner's getting CBS, that would be a much more attractive lure for the NBA. The NBA television rights or, are or coming up. sports in general. Yeah, exactly. But that's just that, you know, I don't know about streaming. I don't know about cable. I do know about live sports. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, some of those things are hundred, hundred, you're talking hundreds of millions of eyeball. There's nothing else that comes close. No, but it's also very expensive and you're renting those rights. I mean, the, the NFL payment that Paramount Global has to make is something like $2 billion and it's coming up soon just on the right to air football. So it's a very expensive proposition. Paramount is now the odd person out of the streaming wars. They are too small to compete and they're looking for a deal, open for business. Is news other than Squawk Box worth, worth, worth anything? Matt, I mean, is CBS News, can they do something with that or? Well, there would certainly be synergies between yeah, CNN synergies and CBS once again, News. Just, yeah, but not, like, it's not, not doing it because it's a great thing to put them together. It's like they're both still trying to hang on to each other to, to, to be yeah, somewhat minutes, but that comes after, somewhat the, relevant. after the NFL, which gives it a big boost. Is that an hour long? That's true. Thing? Yeah, I mean, minutes. you know, no, Zaslav, minutes. Zaslav likes CNN for reasons other than the bottom line. He said it's a great global asset. It's got uh, the obvious influence. Um, and it has been traditionally a good business. I mean, this is a, an outlet that has been thrown off a billion dollars in profit. And, you know, they've had some challenges. The ratings are way down at CNN. But we are going into an election year when news networks tend to benefit. And they could see it at least it will keep them in the television advertising game here. So CNN is praying that the Supreme Court reverses the Colorado's. <laughs> Supreme Court, right? Praying, please let this guy run. What's CNN without Trump? It's like uh, they're seeing right without... now, and it's not pretty. No.